Hey guys, this will be my second Patreon recommendation. So, I have a pretty crazy one for you today. This is Makunaima by Mario Giandrade. So he's, a little background here, he's a Brazilian writer, a modernist period. This book was published originally in 1928. And... Um, Mario J. Andrade was a folklorist. He studied folk music, he studied folk mythology, he was a poet. Um, he does actually have a book of poems translated in English called The Hallucinated City, which I've seen called uh, the most important book of poetry in Brazil in the 20th century. Um, I read it when I was in school three years ago, four years ago, and uh, it didn't stick out to me too much then, but that doesn't mean much, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it was published in the 60s, at least the, tr the translation, of course. So you can still find it, but it is pretty hard to come by, along with this book. This translation was from 1984, published by Random House. So, um, I got into this book just for my interest in modernism, and I just, you know, had it in the back of my mind. I've always been interested in Brazilian literature, so I was pleased to see this one had been translated, but I was somewhat skeptical, and I still am, because um, reading about the original, which I don't have and couldn't read even if I had it, uh, hopefully someday I'll be changing that, but... Um, the original is supposedly written in a mixture of you know, Brazilian Portuguese and the native languages that are present in Brazil, which there are many. But he did focus on a specific language that is slipping my mind now, but it's the one that he was uh, basically an expert in, where he would visit and learn their um, foundational myths and that sort of thing. And instantly you get the feeling that this book was heavily based in folklore. Uh, to give you an idea of the, the books that this book reminded me of as I was reading it, so you have Finnegan's Wake, which maybe the original has as much linguistic experimentation, but the translation is extremely easy compared to <laughs> Finnegan's Wake, but you get that sort of like shape-shifting and uh, like nothing secure. Uh, one person might become another person, or they might become a snake, or they might become a word, or one person after they die might become comets. You know, that's that's their origin myth for how comets appear. It's this particular character dies and is swept up into the sky, and every comet you see is this this person going around, you know. Gives you ideas of all the Greek mythology of you know, Ovid's Metamorphoses, all these ideas that happen. Actually, yeah, that's a good connection, actually. Um, metamorphosis in this book is huge. I hadn't actually put that together yet. Um, but in the same way that, you know, you might get, you get the origin of the Narcissus flower, you know, uh, that sort of thing where you have, you know, Narcissus leaning over water and looking being stuck looking at himself, that sort of idea where you get these origin myths, where you get, you know, um, characters in the novel doing certain things. What, one hilarious example that I, that I really liked was about halfway through, uh, and I will say it is a fairly short book. It's um, 170 pages in translation, so um, pretty short, but uh, it's extremely dense for those pages. Um, one of my favorite of the origin myths in the book uh, comes about through the middle where uh, this one character, one of Makunaima's brothers, is... Uh, the plot of the book is basically they're going back from Sao Paulo to the jungle and it's like this thing where Makunaima is a, a really lazy, really cowardly. Every time he gets into a fight, which he gets into fights often because... Uh, he has sex with people in the same way that people in a Shakespeare tragedy kill themselves or, you know, poison themselves. It's, 
It's like, oh, oh, there he goes. You know, he killed himself. You know, oh, there he goes. He's having sex with the princess again. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of crazy in that way. You, you just never, you'd never see a book like this today, definitely, at least published. Well, you might, but it'd be self-published and it'd have an anonymous name attached to it but on Amazon, but, um, so that's, that's the basic plot, you know, running away from, uh, Piaiman, P Piaiman, something like that. That's, uh, the main evil character that's chasing Makunaima around, but about halfway through in one of these excursions in the jungle, uh, Makunaima's brother is, uh, I can't remember the exact background, but he's he's spitting globs out of his mouth, you know, in the jungle. And this is how I imagine it. Spitting globs out, and these are, these are white globs. And then uh, this first glob that he spits out becomes, uh, I believe it was an, uh, an ant or a mosquito, some kind of bug. The second glob that he spits out becomes like a cotton boll weevil, you know, a pest that attacks cotton. The third ball he spits out becomes a football. And... Uh, after this like two to three page long, like crazy shape-shifting glob splitting episode, he tells you that this is the origin story of the three major pests of Brazil today. <laughs> you know, the football and then two, two pests, two actual insects that, you know, will attack you and give you uh, parasites and whatever. And I, I just was like, oh my gosh, you know, you're drawn along two to three pages and you're like, where is this going? What? What is, what is he trying to do here? And that's the question I was always asking myself with this book. What is he trying to do here? You know, really. And uh, I imagine that if you read it in the original, it would be more obvious exactly what he was trying to do here, especially if you were an expert in the languages he was an expert in and had some background of the actual mythology. Um, because tying it back to what I was mentioning before, you know, you have the you have Finnegan's Wake, which is, of course, another one of these works that ties together tons of mythologies and mixes tons of languages and is, uh, you know, supremely anti-fascist. <laughs> um, you'd think it'd be more well-read or more read these days. Uh, joking, but, you know, you also get influences of even North American, Native American mythology that I'm more familiar with as opposed to South American mythology. Not especially well-read and in South American mythology, at least, you know, pre-Columbian mythology, especially, and pre-contact mythology. But you get these sort of feelings where, you know, Makunaima is called the hero, uh, but he's the exact opposite of a hero. He's lazy. He never wants to do anything. He always tries to lie to get out of having to do certain chores and certain tasks that are uh, due for a hero. Uh, he runs away from every single fight. I don't think he actually has a fight. In, oh, he, he does have a fight, but he loses. Yeah, he, has, he does have a fight. And he gets uh, tricked into um, going into water that dissolves all of his limbs and uh, loses ears. I think he has one arm. His legs are both gone. No, he has one leg. One leg is gone. Arms are ripped off. And then... That's how he dies, but of course he dies for a sentence, <laughs> and then he's he's up alive again, due, back to his shenanigans. And uh, yeah, I've mentioned most of the main characters. There is another character in here, and the names are pretty hard to figure out the pronunciation. It's C I, so I was I was assuming it was C. Uh, that's the main female character, and um, basically she is. From our current day perspective, you would say she was raped by Makunaima, but it's a little bit hard to say exactly how you'd view it in a different uh, culture, which Makunaima certainly uh, takes place in a different culture than you would imagine, you know, um, let alone an American, but, but even a Brazilian today. Uh, I do have a friend in Brazil who said he read this book, and without footnotes, he said it was almost hopeless to read. So. That does make me believe that this translation has been smoothed over quite a lot. Um, you do still get variations where it, it gave me also feelings of Ulysses in the sense that one chapter you might have extremely ornate language with words you've never seen before, even in the translation. Mixtures of words, puns, you'll have 
sentences that are built as poetry where they will internally rhyme at certain points that you can predict when the next rhyme will happen. But then on the other hand, you'll have chapters that are extremely simple and, or based around dialogue that has, that is littered with ellipsis and you can really not make it out as easily. So in that way, it's, it's definitely a modernist work. And to finish up my last books that this book reminded me of, I was kind of shocked that I, you know, I don't really buy the idea of magical realism. I think it's kind of cheap. I think it's just like, um, like to an extent, everything but the Victorian era was magical realism, I think, honestly. You know, Shakespeare would be called magical realism if you're being honest with yourself. Uh, Milton, probably you could say, was magical realism. Definitely, when you get to the Middle Ages, you start seeing magical realism. Um, the Greeks were magical realism. And of course, Latin America, you see magical realism. Uh, more contemporary books, of course, that are post-magical realism would be called magical realism. Salman Rushdie, whoever else, you know, whatever. And... Uh, so I don't, I don't really buy that distinction, but if you would, if you did buy that distinction, you would have to say that Makunaim is probably one of the first ones that are, that would re reasonably call it magical realist, because it fits all the categories. It's Latin America. It has um, the realist part where you have Sao Paulo. You have people driving around in cars. He mentions. Um, in the in a part of the, at the end of a chapter, he mentions Manuel Bandeira, who is an actual poet of the time. Pretty sure he mentions Raul Bop and several other actual Brazilian poets of the time, which leads me to uh, thinking of Borges, which um, I, I imagine Borges would have known of this guy, or at least you know heard of him and known known about it, if if not actually have read it, and. Uh, you know, really, this book is, I'm kind of, I'm really surprised that it's not more well known, and partially, I think, because it had a small print run in 84, and it's probably not the best translation ever, but um, it's like, it's like the keystone for a lot of really popular stuff. You know, Salman Rushdie would fall into this guy's tradition, I think, post, post this, um, all the Latin American boom would, would, in some sense, whether explicitly or not, or, or um, you know, implicitly or explicitly, be in this tradition of Makunaima. And it seems to me that really Mario Chiandraje was the originator of a lot of stuff. And um, yeah, I didn't want to spend too much more longer than. 15 minutes was my was my limit on this I wanted to put so uh, I think I'll end it here I know this review is a little scattered all over but um, this is a crazy book this is probably the weirdest book I've ever read actually and I would love to be able to read it in the original and see exactly what he does with the mixture like the mixture of Brazilian Portuguese with the uh, so-called indigenous or native languages and just see how he mixes that, because I've just been fascinated with like macaronic literature, which is generally used to refer to like Latin and Italian, but it's been broadened out to mean books written in more than one language or a dialect. So I think it'd be fascinating. And then when you tie it into later Brazilian literature, Xuagui Marais Rosa, Granessa Talvareras, and so on. I just think this book is excellent and if you like the type of books I like to read, you like modernism, you like Finnegan's Wake, you like magical realism, I think you would really enjoy this, Makunaima by Mario Giantraci. Yeah, Please pardon any of the mispronunciations you see in this video. I can only imagine how many there are, but yeah, I would recommend this highly. Uh, so thanks for watching, and uh, thank you very much for those of you who are uh, generous enough to give me money for uh, these patreon recommendations and you know to support me in general um, there'll be more to come like this so thank you death is a gang boss